Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over the ships of the Riftborn and how to design for them. First, the basics. The Riftborn hulls are very specialized towards their specific roles. Attack ships having a lot of weapon modules, and support ships having next to none. But what the support ships lack in firepower, they make up for in support and defensive slots. The Riftborn fleets can be extremely powerful if built correctly. But be warned, attack ships on their own will not survive. Mixed fleets are critical to success of the Riftborn in space combat. Let's go over their civilian hulls first. The Irrational Class Hull is the Riftborn colonizer ship. This purpose designed hull carries the vulnerable Riftborn population to their new home. This ship module layout is a common one among the Sibs of Endless Space 2. This ship should be built for speed or low cost, depending on the type of galaxy you're playing in. Not much to say on the next one. The imaginary class is the scout ship for the Riftborn. Use it like you would most other civs. Build this one for scouting anomalies in the early game, or equip with missiles if you want to take them into combat, pirates, and other such early game threats. Now we're starting to get into some of the uniqueness of Riftborn ships. The natural class is the small attacker hole for the Riftborn and packs the module slots to prove it. The complete hull of the natural allows for four weapons, four defensive modules, and two support modules. This ship is a well-balanced design and should serve you well. Pair with rational class ships for maximum efficiency. The rational class is the Riftborn small support ship. Boasting two weapons, three defensive modules, and five support modules, this ship will help carry your natural class ships to victory in the early game. Like any support ship, they can fit many job types, but in the early game and mid game, they will be best used with fleet support modules to give your assault ships a boost. The triangular hull is the Riftborn medium assault class and is thought to be more of a strike cruiser. Coming with a massive nine weapons once the ship is fully upgraded, one of which is a huge slot giving the ship even more deadly firepower. This ship can lay down some serious fire on an enemy target, reducing them to space debris in no time. However, there is a trade-off that comes with this immense firepower. The hull only has two defensive slots and one support slot. The support slot is mainly used for a speed boost, and the defensive slots can be loaded out depending on your enemy. Due to lack of a defensive slot, I don't recommend splitting your defenses between armor and shields with this ship during wartime. If left unescorted, this ship will fall to less heavily armored craft with surprising ease. That is where the Tetrahedral class comes in. The Riftborn medium support ship will be used mainly to draw fire away from the triangular class ships. This ship, when fully upgraded, also has a huge weapon slot, a weapon slot squadron slot, four defensive modules, and six support modules. Equip modules to increase this ship's chance of being targeted once you have them available. This will drastically increase the survivability of your medium ships and lead to more decisive victories. While performing that role, this ship can also be used with fleet movement support modules in great number to create a very mobile fleet of highly deadly Riftborn craft. The sheer amount of support modules on this ship make it very versatile, but also extremely good at specific jobs if you specialize multiple builds of this whole type. A Prime class is the large carrier class for the Riftborn and comes with not only an amazing design, but amazing capability. A well-balanced design, this ship has seven weapon slots, two of which are huge, five defensive slots, and four support slots. This ship alone has enough slots to make an assault on a planet with siege modules and troop transport modules, while at the same time being able to defend itself against small enemy fleets. I suggest specializing this hull into two different builds one carrier and one battleship focused. Use those in their respective roles as fleet support and a main battle line ship in order to take a full advantage of this absolutely enormous ship. Now that we know about the ships of the Riftborn, we can cover overall fleet strategy. The biggest point is making sure your assault ships have adequate escort. The triangular class, the medium attacker, is very vulnerable to enemy ships and can't survive on its own for very long. However, once you combine it with support ships, it could be one of the most deadly ships in the game. Typically towards the end of the game, I move to a medium ship fleet with one large ship and a couple of smaller ships to add a lot of cheap fleet boosters. Riftborn ships take a lot of production in order to build, however. Thankfully, the Riftborn can deal with this in stride due to their boost in production. Ship for ship, these are some of the most powerful ships in the game. You won't have to build massive amounts of these ships in order to rule the galaxy. 
Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this guide helpful, and don't forget to like and share if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and press the bell so you don't miss out on future fleet guide and discussion videos. See you all next time.